the Ethiopian government asked for assistance to solve the housing problem in Addis Abeba. This parametric master plan was designed to generate an urban guideline adaptable to any site in the city. The design started from a few assumptions. The need for a rainwater harvesting can be solved using the driveway as the main rainwater collector. In order to minimize the connections, there's a need to have all the seven blocks aligned. And to keep the structures easily maintainable, it's useful to have a common infrastructure for water and electricity out of the ground, the aqueduct. And to keep the dense network of relationship of the pre-existing plants, it's necessary to have a diffuse fabric with a widely semi-private issue. And this is the code. It starts with the definition of the optimal flow curve. You get to put in the terrain, it generates the optimal flow curve, and then I use it to draw the main street that crosses the area. The distance between the buildings is defined through a very simple trigonometric formula that uses latitude, longitude, maximum height of the buildings that you have to set, and the sun elevation angle. Next step is to set the area contours and the previous building contours. The baselines of the linear system are divided into points with a fixed distance that we have calculated previously. Here. And those points will host the geometries of the building plans. The dimension of all the plants has to be set in a specified field of the code, generating simple rectangles of the overall shape. In this example, we have five different typologies of plants, A, B, C, D, and E. Every typology has got a different quality issue in terms of open spaces and square meters per person. Now, to differentiate the housing proposal, we will need to place those typologies in zones. And in the code, this is done by placing some attractor points. As if you can choose directly which zone has the major quality, with the highest income apartment. The density attractors define the height of the building. Closest is the house to one of those attractors, more stories the building will have. This part is placed in view where the typologies are placed with that attractor points configuration. Here you can see the letters referred to each typology and the geometries of each unit placed in the area. They have the dimension I said previously. We have a final overview of the results. Here you can see how the density attractors have extruded the rectangles of the building. Just with that apparently random configuration. Of course, the water system is placed aligned to the baselines I shown previously.
and this is the parametric schedule to have a real-time control of your process. Here you can see how it changes the number of residents settled, the coverage ratio, the floor space ratio and other interesting data. Now, let's see what changes if I move my attractor point. Let's start with the value attractor. As you can see, the disposition of the typologies are now quite different, and I can go on modifying the position of those points as I wish. And it will be displayed in the schedule. And in the 3D view, you can see what happens if I change the position of the density attractors. What happens is, uh, is that the skyline changes. I can go on. 